Joe Biden just destroyed Kamala Harris's presidential campaign, guaranteeing that she will lose. And I think he did it on purpose. From the Washington Examiner, Biden won't invoke the Taft-Hartley Act to stop the port strike that could cost $5 billion a day. That means that inflation is going to go up, prices are going to go up, people are going to start getting laid off. And so they will not have the paychecks to be able to afford the unaffordable items that are no longer coming into the country and will therefore have shortages and potential price gouging. And voting for Kamala Harris isn't going to help. It's going to make it worse. I think he's doing it on purpose because he's mad he got shoved out the door. And now, because the union boss is uh, is pushing to keep the strike going on and destroying the economy even further, people are going to blame the problems in the economy on the Biden-Harris administration, of which Harris is an integral part. Thousands of unionized dock workers on the East uh, and Gulf Coast are preparing to walk off the job Tuesday, uh, stranding containers, choking off supply chains for consumer goods and costing the economy an estimated $5 billion a day. President Joe Biden has one card left to play, a nearly 80-year-old law that could force union members back to work while negotiations continue. On Sunday, Biden said he would not get Involved Now, CNN has said that uh, this would actually be a bad play, that uh, uh, invoking the Taft-Hartley Act would actually damage Kamala Harris because it would force the unions to go back to work and would damage her reputation with the unions. Here's the thing. That's 47,000 people who are being harmed by the strike. If they go back to work while negotiations happen, they are bringing in their paychecks. And they can even negotiate back pay that would cover during the time of the uh, the cooling off period. 47,000 people earning money while negotiations happen versus uh, a boatload more probably two or 300 million people feeling the sting of a damaged economy and higher prices as a result of this strike. And they're going to blame Biden for not solving the problem. Now, I'm not saying that it's his fault, but the perception is going to be there and we need to play that up. Absolutely. Because it's going to hurt and it'll hurt even more if Harris actually gets elected. So let's just put it this way. Biden's destroying Harris because he's uh, favoring 47,000 people over 330 million Americans. That's all of them, including those 47,000. On Monday, White House Pre- Press Secretary um, Karine Jean-Pierre backed the sentiment up uh, when Biden said it's a collective bargaining thing. I don't believe in Taft-Hartley, even though he used it for the railroad strike in 2022 to keep himself in power and uh, try and keep the House of Representatives. I know there's a question about the Taft or about the Taft Hartley. We have never invoked the Taft Hartley to break a strike and are not considering doing so now. She said in the press briefing re- referring to Biden as a pro union president. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Correct me in the comments if I am mistaken about the railroad strike because um if I remember correctly they did invoke it, but if I'm wrong, I'll admit that I'm wrong. And if you uh, if you can correct me, I will admit it for sure. Under the federal Taft-Hartley Act, presidents can intervene in labor disputes that threaten national security or safety by imposing an 80-day cooling off period of sorts. During that time, workers have to show up and do their job. The contract between the operators of port terminals uh, from Maine to Texas, which handle about half of all goods shipped in the United States, and the International Longshoremen's Association is expected to expire one minute past midnight. The contract covers workers who load and unload cargo ships uh, in three dozen ports. The ports are the Port Operators Group, the U.S. Maritime Alliance, and the union are stuck over wage increases and automation. Don't forget automation. About 45,000 longshoremen are covered by a contract between the Maritime Alliance and the ILA. Negotiations between the two have been stalled since June when the union stopped talking, and it sounds like they actually planned this strike on purpose, trying to deliberately damage the economy. Go go watch my previous video on their chief negotiator and his $900,000 a year salary. Um, let's see, citing the use of labor-saving technology at a port in Mobile, Alabama that would kill jobs as the clock continues to tick toward the deadline. Dread has started to set in, and it has already started. 
We're not seeing prices go up yet, but it will be felt across the country by the end of the week. We are literally at Cliff's Edge. Chris Spear, the president and CEO of uh, the American Trucking Association, told News Nation. Spear said the effects of the strike will ripple through the country and be felt nearly every, or felt by nearly everyone in America. And it's all happening pretty quickly. October surprise, anybody? Uh, you are going to see the severity of it in uh, in week one, starting with agriculture, he said. 46% of everything in ag- agriculture is exported through the East Coast ports. So farmers, those perishables uh, from produce, but also meat, poultry, soybeans, cotton, those should be redirected to stores in the United States, if you ask me. Uh, This is very significant for our farming community, but also 85% of the canned goods go through the East Coast ports. Uh, So you're talking about half of North Carolina underwater or mud and four other states directly impacted and trying to recover from a natural disaster. This is not the time for a strike. Tim Ryan, the owner of Square One Farms, a Sunrise Florida-based importer uh, that sells asparagus to supermarkets, told the Wall Street Journal that the effects of the strike uh, have already begun. Ryan said he will fly 150,000 pounds of asparagus from Peru this week that would usually arrive by ocean at Florida's port of Miami to avoid the risk of the vegetables getting stuck at sea and rotting. The air rates will quadruple his transportation costs, adding 50 cents a pound to the prices he charges uh, stores. Either supermarkets uh, elect to absorb the cost or they will pass it on, he said. Ryan sells his products to grocery stores such as Walmart, Kroger, and Wegmans. Uh, Trade groups um, representing hundreds of retailers and manufacturers from Target to General Motors have appealed to the Biden administration to step in and stop the strike, warning that a shutdown could be devastating on the economy and trigger inflation ahead of the holiday shopping season and the November election. Don't let them forget. And I think Biden knows all of this, or his handlers do. I think they're pretty mad that Kamala Harris is doing terribly, and they're ready to be done. The Taft-Hartley Act is basically a federal law that restricts the power of labor unions. It was enacted by Congress in 1947 over the veto of then-President Harry Truman, who called it a dangerous intrusion on free speech. Taft-Hartley was introduced after a wave of strikes took place in 45 and 46. The act was pushed through uh, the GOP-controlled Congress though many Democrats supported their colleagues in its passage. It's been modified uh, uh, a few times. Oh, the legislation modified the 1935 uh, National Relation, or National Labor Relations Act. It added new restrictions on unions as well as a designated new union-specific unfair labor practices. Among other things, the new law prohibited uh, political strikes, mass picketing, closed shops, and secondary boycotts, which is when a trade union strikes or boycotts in support of a strike initiated by workers in a separate corporation. It was also the first law that banned unions and corporations from making independent expenditures in support of or in opposition to federal federal candidates, uh, according to the First Amendment scholar Floyd Abrams. Amendments in the Taft-Hartley Act also allowed states to enact right-to-work laws banning unions. Right-to-work laws don't ban unions. They make it illegal. uh, Right-to-work laws make it illegal for people to be forced to join unions. That's the difference. And it's a very stark difference and a very important difference. The law also gave the president the ability to intervene in strikes or potential strikes that cause a national emergency, which this one is going to be doing by the end of the week. Presidents have used the power less frequently as the years have gone by, but it was last used by President George W. Bush in 2002. Okay, so I was wrong about the railroad thing then. That's my mistake, my error, and I admit it. I invoked the law to intervene in the 11-day shutdown of 29 West Coast ports, saying they were vital to our economy and to our military and could not afford to be shut down. And uh, the rest of it basically talks about how there's not likely to be any intervention because Biden wants Kamala Harris to lose because he's mad he was shoved out the door. So it's going to get ugly. Buckle up. But remember who you're voting for this year. Remember who actually cares about you, including the 47,000 workers who now have to stand out in the cold without a paycheck. Till next time, thanks for watching.